This will probably be a really brief video, I hope, <coughs> although I often say that. Um, just about the symmetries of sine and cosine graphs. At least some of the symmetries. There's there's uh, a bunch of cool properties about the sine and cosine graphs. Here I have uh, a zoomed out version of what I had in the uh, sine graph intro and the cosine graph intro videos, which would be good to watch first. Um, I've got a point that's going to be my theta value, and moving that turns this wheel, moves the point along the unit circle. So for example, 2 pi is out around 6.3, it's back to where it started. Pi is around 3, it's halfway around. And I can go the other way as well. Negative rotation, a negative theta value, gives me a negative angle. And so this horizontal axis corresponds to the theta, and then the two dots bouncing up and down are the sine and cosine. Right now, the higher of the two, I at this point, is the sine. You can see the height of this is matches the height of this. It's just the sine, the height of that point in the circle. The other one is the cosine, which is a little trickier, as we've seen. That vertical distance is this horizontal distance, the horizontal coordinate of this point in the circle. So let's see. Before I, I trace it and make it maybe kind of give away, let's see what happens to the, to the sine. That's starting at 0 here. So in fact, let me just um, let me change the color of the cosine. Um, so cosine is going to be blue. Okay, I don't want to hide it, because then it's going to be hard to unhide it. Um, so the, let's pay attention to the red point right now. So it starts out, as I, as I look at positive angles, that gives me positive numbers cranking up to 1 and then coming down. Okay. What if I look at the op opposite end? What happens if I look at negative angles? They give me exactly the corresponding heights, but negative of what I had before. This, the height of this point on the unit circle, let me co connect these two guys. The height of this point on the unit circle is just exactly the opposite of the height if I had had the opposite angle up here. And that's corresponding to the red points having opposite heights over here. So when I change the input angle sign, I change the sign of the height. That's exactly the characteristic of an odd function. So we should see, if I trace this, we should see an odd symmetric function. And the graph of that shows an origin symmetry. Or in other words, a 180 degree rotation symmetry. Let's see what happens if we do that. Okay, let's graph that whole thing, basically. Okay. Now, a point right here, for example. Let's go ahead and take it back. Okay. A point right here, if I flip it across the both axes, flip it across, yeah, if I flip the x-axis, it flips across the y. That's one way to see an origin symmetry. Or if I really literally pick this graph up and I rotate it, I don't think I'm going to try to use the rotate feature right now on, or on uh, Sketchpad because I think it would mess the rest of it up. But if I take this and I rotate it around, I'll get this guy. If I take this and I rotate it around, I'll get this guy on top. If I take, say, a point in between, I'll rotate it around and I'll get this guy here. So sine is an odd function. So sine is odd. Origin symmetry of its graph. Now it's important to remember there's the way the symmetry came from is the unit circle. That has a different feel from what the symmetry is I'm talking about here. So I'm not saying that you take a point on this circle and zoom it across the circle and you're going to get the same sine value, something like that. It's a little tricky to keep them straight. But when we look at its graph with angle on the horizontal and height on the vertical, it's going to have an origin symmetry. OK, so now let's erase those traces. And, um, ah, shoot, and I created new traces. All right, well, first I will stop tracing. And now I will erase the traces. That's better. And now I'm going to start tracing the blue. This is cosine. Okay, well, actually, not quite yet. Here's cosine. It starts out at 1, because the x-coordinate of this point, our starting point on the unit circle, is 1. And now, um, as I go positive, I'm going to get decreasing x values until 0. What if I go similarly negative? I still get the same thing. I'm still in the positive x value region. Same stuff. Over here, I get negative values. Well, what if I cranked around counter uh, counterclockwise the same amount? Oh, similar negative values. So here, when I change the direction of rotation, the horizontal position of this point on, this, on the circle doesn't change. 
Um, and so that's going to indicate an even function. Let's see if that has the effect we, we think. Oh, whoops. I don't want to trace the red point. I want to trace the blue point. But then I want to, aha. And there's the cosine graph. And we've seen the positive part of the cosine graph. But now we want to, we're looking at the symmetry across the y-axis. So here, if I go this way on this picture, it means counterclockwise rotation by a certain amount, and then figure out the x-coordinate of this point. If I go this way by the same amount, it means take this point and zoom around clockwise the same amount. And I'm going to get to a point that's different on the unit circle, but it's flipped across the horizontal axis, and it doesn't have a different horizontal coordinate. It's got the same horizontal coordinate. And so that's going to create an even function when we look at cosine, okay? And so that's going to be um, cosine is even, and that's a y-axis symmetry of its graph. And if we want to look at it in terms of equations, it's really Im important to be able to write it down algebraically. It says sine of minus theta is equal to minus sine of theta. And cosine of minus theta is equal to just plain cosine theta. Oh, there's no minus there. Hello. Minus. Super, super, super important. It just didn't, I just didn't type it. And then cosine theta. I'm glad I fixed that. Okay. So in cosine, the minus goes away. And in sine, it stays there. It comes out. My sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. Okay, um, one more symmetry that's really, really important is the fact that um, when I move this point around, starting from theta equals 0 all the way to theta equals 2 pi, I get back to the top, and then I start over again, and over and over and over and over again. Going forward or back, it's a repeating, endlessly repeating periodic pattern. No matter how much I rotate, I just repeat this pattern every 2 pi. That is unbelievably important. And that says that both sine and cosine are periodic functions. Periodic functions. They repeat endlessly. And when you have a periodic function, you should be able to tell how often does it repeat? How long does it take? from the start of a cycle to the start of the next cycle. And that is one trip around the unit circle. And in radians, that's 2 pi. And we're going to make a lot of that. And we'll talk about that algebraically as well. But I think I'll uh, stop the video now.